You're listening to the Inquisitive Red Podcast, the show that brings you philosophical ponderings of your life from a bird's eye view. Now, here's your host, Shah. Welcome, everyone. It's Shaw here, and welcome to the Inquisitive Wren podcast. Now, this is a show where we look at everyday life and the state of being human. And today we're going to be talking about a topic very dear to my heart, uh, which is past life regression. Now, I am aware that there are many viewpoints regarding the topic of past life regression, and those viewpoints can be the topic of many lively discussions. It doesn't matter what your beliefs are around this particular therapy, it can help to eliminate and relieve many physical and emotional distresses. And this is based upon my own experience as a therapist and in applying past life regression for those who want to explore. So the theories behind this therapy are, one, that our souls reincarnate and move on to experience other lives. Two, that we are simply connecting with the collective unconscious, the universe's memory storehouse. Three, that we are using our ever-accessible imaginations to create a story or experience. And four, that we are recalling without realizing something we've previously seen or heard and adding our own scripts to a memory recall. Nonetheless, you needn't be concerned about whether or not the life really existed as such. The information uncovered will always give many insights into your current life circumstances. So, Through the use of hypnotherapy, you are relaxed into a trance state, and this is how you go back in time into a past life. Now, I'll talk about the things that are helpful and the things that you may not find so helpful when you start to regress. And I'll just try and go in succession here because there's a lot to this topic. So, Through hypnotherapy, which is the process used, you are guided through a visual and a sensory journey to a past life. You may experience this as if you are an observer watching from afar, or you may be in the experience, you know, feeling it as if you're actually there. The important thing is that there should be no pressure to do one or the other. And in fact, you really won't know what you will experience until you experience it. One is not better than the other. If a traumatic physical or emotional distress has occurred in a past life, it is often encouraged that you experience it as it is so that it can be relived or uh, revisited to be released. Your soul will have a memory with senses and feelings and you will only go into the experience as much as your soul needs to, to gain understanding and integration. This is what we we are looking to achieve. Remember, do not compete with yourself for an idea that you may have of an experience. You know, there's many books out there about past life regression And if you've read one of them, Brian Weiss is one of the um, most famous authors about past life regression. Uh, And so if you've read any of those books, you may want to be looking to achieve what you've read about. Your experience may be different. So try not to compete with yourself. Put aside what you've read in books about other people's experiences with past life regression everyone's soul, everyone's soul's journey will be unique to them. So be excited about your own soul's journey and trust that whatever happens was meant to happen. So many people ask how many sessions or will it happen in one session? So there are a few answers to this. Several sessions may be needed to fully move through the process with a cathartic release. 
However, my experience is one session. I've only had to do one session with everyone. So anxiety disorders such as panic attacks, phobias, or physical illnesses can be regressed back to a connection to a past life often. But if you are experiencing that anxiety in this life, it is quite likely that you will have a lot of anxiety about actually regressing to a past life. And so if you're too nervous, if you're too anxious, if you're frightened, you know, all of that's in the realm of anxiety, then it can stop you from regressing, from relaxing enough to just experience the experience. You may have been a victim of injustice or a cruel or angry person, and you find that people walk all over you today. That could go back to a past life. And I'm basing these statements on my experiences in regressing over a thousand people over the past 20 some years uh, using hypnotherapy for past life regression. Again, I reiterate, you don't actually have to believe. I have, I, well, there's been just very few, I can count two, who have said to me, look, I'll tell you straight away, I don't actually believe in past life regression, but I would like to try it because. This issue has been happening, therapy hasn't helped, whatever it may be. So just keep aware, be in mind. And some of you may think, well, they actually do believe in it. Not necessarily. Um, many people take medication that they don't agree with, but they feel it will help and work, and they have to try it to see. So I would akin the same. I would, I would use that scenario. On many occasions, people do recall very enjoyable past lives. So this is the thing. Everyone's looking for the to be a queen or king or, or everyone's anticipating these horrific past lives. And sometimes there's a, they're actually really enjoyable. However, within that enjoyment, you can uncover exactly where the connection is where the two lives, where you your soul has journeyed into this life and you've brought certain bits and pieces into this life from that past life. So even though overall the life may have been quite enjoyable and fun and happy and all the things that you would find happiness within, there may be that one issue and you can see the connection. And it's often because of other people, not necessarily your own choices, uh, initially, but then we look under it, and this is how past life can help because it gives you a peripheral view, a bird's eye view, which is what this channel is all about, into how and why these lives happen and how the actual issue that wasn't really you, how your choices in the end affected you. So through this insight, people are often able to rekindle, reignite, restart different creative and mental endeavors that they've put into the background. Writers, artists, and many creative people find that past life regression gives them a glimpse uh, and an experience into another world as such, broadening their perspective of their lives in the world. A past life regression session can often shed light onto the ego-driven personalities or even narcissistic personalities who think they're talented in one area but find themselves stuck and not moving forward. In these cases, a past life can reveal why or how that's come to be. Actors, politicians often find this is the case when they don't excel in getting elected or obtaining certain acting roles or winning huge accolades. Uh, they often, my experience has been, they will come for a past life regression session because they've gotten so many accolades for to a certain extent and to a certain point, and they produce such amazing life moving work that the general public acknowledge, but the powers that be, in other words, the big uh, awards, shall we say, aren't coming, and they just can't work out why. And so it's been very interesting in those sessions 
how and why that's happened. And we go back and see their soul's journey. And I can only say it's just extraordinary uh, what, what's uncovered. So they're often on, sometimes they're on the wrong path. Sometimes they're on the wrong path. And that may be surprising to people because they will achieve certain success. But success doesn't necessarily mean you'll remain on that path. And I think that when we look at life purpose, many people, well, I certainly don't agree with there being one life purpose. My sort of MO is that we're here to do many different things and we've got several life purposes. How can we live one life on this earth? We, we, we will experience different bits and pieces, different lives as such. Never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now. Thank you for your support. You make this podcast possible. Now, back to the show. So the important thing to know is that in order to experience a past life regression, your ability to achieve a sufficient trance state and hypnosis will be the key element. So I always have a telephone conversation or Zoom, you know, with someone before I agree to regress them. And that is because I need to find out certain things. One, uh, well, I'm jumping ahead a bit because I'm going to talk about the criteria. But on that point, I really do need to see how much experience they have with maybe meditation, relaxation. I need to feel their energy as well. And sometimes people are very high strung. And if you're highly strung, it doesn't mean you're unable to regress. It doesn't mean you're unable to relax. Uh, but I, I need to test it out and, and see. So sometimes I will do a short mini little relaxation just to see how you respond. You must give yourself time to feel comfortable with the process itself and most importantly, to relax, but also time to fully understand what you would like to achieve. So I would never regress someone just for fun. Uh, you know, some people have approached me and said, oh, I just want to see what it's like. That's not good enough. It's a two hour session. It's not free. <laughs> and my time's important and so is yours. So we need a goal here, just like therapy. We need a goal here. We need to see what you want to achieve. So fear, uh, interference, uncertainty, lack of knowledge, or not having trust in the therapist as well to help you with the process can all hinder. It can stop you achieving and having a very successful past life regression session. So it's very important for myself as a therapist to eliminate as much as I can. The process of elimination for any of those things happening has to take place. And the session isn't often scheduled the day of or whatever. It's because of my schedule mainly, but often we need to give you time as well. Further along, the sessions are outlined for you to review if you need several sessions. Uh, again, my experience has been you just need the one. I have not done more than one. Now, just to be clear, I have regressed the same person more than once, but it's been for different reasons, for different things at different times. And even then, it's not more than four. Uh, but if you do need, you know, I am open to that. I know that it can happen. So if you do need several sessions, uh, we, we will go through the process. If you're used to regression or if you're used to hypnosis, relaxation, then one session will likely be sufficient. And it's often the case. So I will also help people to become more comfortable with their spiritual side uh, because there can be well, there always is healing, but there can be an understanding, a deeper understanding for you, not just to find out the information, the hardcore facts. Sometimes you need to connect with your soul as well. So I always give uh, a section on hypnotherapy. There is one on the website. But 
I always say to everyone, if you've seen movies, again, if you've read books, you've heard stories about other past lives, just try your best to put it aside, put it out of your mind before you attend the session. So you don't need fantasy invading your thoughts or even sabotaging your session because fantasy will sabotage your session. All the fantasies about what it will be like can sabotage your session because you will be unconsciously judging yourself that, oh, it didn't happen like this and I'm not doing it correctly and you'll stop yourself. Really, you don't need fantasy invading your your thoughts whilst you're trying to regress. And whilst this is extremely rare, I thought it was important to mention it. Your session and past lives are unique to you and you only. The people who will have been involved in a past life, that's their involvement, but they're not the ones regressing. You are. So your experience should not represent or be similar to anything else except your own soul's journey. The majority of people who have past life regression will not be quoted in books or replicated in movies, you know, unless, I mean, those those stories are made up. And if therapists have been consulted, then it's through uh, getting legal representation and permission from the actual person who was regressed. Uh, and that is client confidentiality. So the majority of people, un- you know, unless people do, of course, agree to tell their stories. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the process and how you would uh, begin the the journey itself. So many people want to know uh, why this, why something's happening to them why they are unable to progress in life, why they may be experiencing anxiety or social unawareness, or perhaps they have trouble with relationships. Or, uh, I, I mean, I will give you a few examples, just a wide range, obviously, because I've regressed many people. So I will say some of the issues that people have come along with are stuttering, Uh, physical aggression from others, Uh, people stealing from them. Also, uh, I would say, you know, uh, how do you say, public accolades, Um, loss of children or not being able to have children, Uh, being in the limelight when not necessarily wanting to be, Uh, and I mean, the list goes on. There are many, 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 obviously I'm trying to, you know, I mean, (laughs) it's been many years, so I'm trying to think of all the, you know, but I like to give the example because I know that the person doesn't mind because they've told me, but, and obviously I don't give the person's name, but there is an author who does like to come along every few years for a regression session And this has gone on for the past 20 years. And I've only done a few regressions with the person. And for them, they are connecting with the past life because the process involves, although I'm I'm helping to facilitate the process, there's the element of me being in there a little bit as well. So after the session, we we compare notes. I tell you what I got. You tell me what you got. Uh, now it's your regression session, so I'm not I'm not on the journey with you. I can only see a few bits, and I can only feel a few things. And it's just going to happen because it's a spiritual experience, and I'm an open vessel. However, it's you. It's your experience. So you will be telling me what's happening throughout the session. Um, the important thing is if you're on medication, anything that is, that alters your normal state, then it's uh, hypnosis even is not a great idea. So I check all of these things before I accept you as a client. And 
so, you know, experiencing those past life sessions for this author gives them a lot of insight into not just their own past lives, which they've made huge progress with, uh, but also into how creativity can be used or your life can be used with your own creativity. You've experienced things in the past for a reason. And of course, this is a belief system. So you take what you like and leave the rest. It's my favorite thing to say. Take what you like and leave the rest. I am certainly not a therapist who likes to debate. These are all belief systems. So whatever you believe, you believe. And through my own experiences, personal and professional, I believe what I believe through based on my own experience. So there's no need for debate. It's not open for me. Uh, I accept your beliefs and you don't have to accept mine, but I accept what you believe. I may disagree with you what you believe and you may disagree with what I believe. Nevertheless, I'm saying all this because, again, as I opened this podcast with, you don't have to necessarily believe in order for it to work and help. Also, the other process through it all is I do test, as I mentioned before. So if there's any issue, if I feel like, oh, this isn't going to be helpful, um, then I won't do the session. I have turned people away, not loads, but I have turned several people away. And sometimes it's not easy to gauge either. They will be so convincing. And then I find out they're in a bit of competition because their relative had a session with me that was life changing. And so now they want to have the session with me. But these people, you know, you're two, your sister, your brother, you're two different people, or whatever, auntie, niece, whatever it may be, father, son, you're very different people. So it doesn't mean you will have that successful session because your father had one so it just depends but and sometimes it's difficult to gauge um sometimes people do go through the actual process i can see that they're in the regression i'm watching them i can see what they're doing their movements everything their voice everything what's happening for them at the time because i ask you to tape it as well um i you would have have to have permission from me to uh tape the visual but you can take you already have permission to tape the audio but the visual I don't often allow uh, and that is for professional reasons obviously as a therapist Uh, also I'm in charge of my image and what's how it's being used so one of the things too that I often say is if you're turned away if I turn you away it just may not be the right time it may not be because you've done anything wrong or anything like that It may just be that it's not the right time for you to do a past life regression session. However, it is important to know, and I began to touch on this before, that many challenges or problems that you're creating in this lifetime are not connected in any way to a past life. Many of our problems stem from this present life and will be largely a product of your own upbringing. Some people find themselves stuck in this lifetime and they go through years and years of therapy to challenge their issues or not. Perhaps they don't. Therapy isn't for everyone. They will often uncover the information through therapeutic means or self-help means. Uh, But because they refuse to change the behaviors and beliefs, beliefs are huge, they think that it must be due to a past life because they haven't been able to affect change. Whilst this may sometimes be the case, more often it is not. So if you are having some problems, and again, this is why that initial consultation with myself either via phone or Zoom, is absolutely necessary because I do need to weed out uh, what the possibilities could be. Again, very long session of two hours. And if the issues are because of this lifetime, things that happen to you in this lifetime, then why, why would you want to regress to a past life? Because it's not going to be helpful therapeutically, not in that sense, not to uncover what's wrong. 
So again, the other thing that can happen is often with hypnotherapy, people are looking for a fast cure, a magic trick. And so people will often seek out hypnotherapy uh, for an addiction uh, because they don't want to go into rehab or they don't want to experience the pain, the discomfort of what they might experience if they had to do that work. And also, uh, sometimes people don't want to go through therapy. They think a life coach, which is not therapy at all, they think a life coach will be the answer. So it's important that you seek the right help if there is an issue that should be dealt with now on the earth plane as opposed to a past life. Past life regression can shed light upon and bring some learning to your soul's journey. So, you know, when you go through the past life, there's healing as well. However, just as you were responsible for your own life in the past life, you are fully responsible for your own life in this lifetime. Remember, knowledge isn't power until it's applied. This is something I always say, knowledge is not power until it's applied. And you must make every effort to actively, actively challenge your beliefs, change your behavior, working at it like it's a mission in your life. It's, you're on a mission. It can take months, years, decades to change some behaviors. Uh, relapse is, is one example. People can stop drinking or taking drugs for years, for decades, and then they relapse for some reason or stop smoking or being abusive. There are many issues where sometimes that behavior is rears its ugly head and there's always a stressor attached. That's why therapy is helpful. That's where therapy is helpful. Um, it all depends on how much time you spend working on it. So what we do know is that nothing stays the same. And eventually, I believe something will change. And when you're looking at past life regression as well, it's not the be all to end all. It isn't the magic cure. So it may be that you go through a past life regression session, and yes, a lot is revealed. Now, what do you do with the information? So at the end of, or towards the end of the session, it's not the end, but after we've got the, the berries, I call it the berries out, we've got the, bear, the sweetness out, we've got exactly what we were looking for, our intention out, we do need to do some healing because at that point, a, you're exhausted. It is an exhausting session for you. Let me just say, for you, it's exhausting. You will be so tired at the end. It's important that you never schedule anything afterwards as well because you will be in a daze for the rest of the day and you will need to rest. You will really need to be kind to yourself. So I always check that out as well when we schedule the session. Uh, so... You will have to do some healing because by that point in the session, all people are revealed, the issue is revealed, all the stuff is revealed, good, bad, the ugly, it's all revealed. Sometimes it's all good and we look at things, sometimes there's some mm, interesting bits there and sometimes it's been quite traumatic. Um, and I don't worry, I will get to the bit about uh, most asked questions as well. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, email me at guest at theinquisitiveren.com. I'd love to hear from you. Now, the part about uh, most asked questions, one, uh, what if I was a king, queen, and ruled the country and killed lots of people? Well, I've only had a similar one come up. And so here's the thing. Most people wouldn't have been a king or queen or a knight or anything like that, or even a page. So 
it's usually everyday life people, but some people have been quite high up in society in some way. And if you've killed lots of people, yes, that is on your soul. It doesn't mean it's manifested in this life as you losing lots of people. Sometimes it can do, but not always. Nevertheless, that part will come up somehow and you'll have to work with it. I mean, I can't give one scenario. There are many scenarios where somehow that's affected your life to this day. And I mean, many different scenarios. So this is where you'll have to use your imagination. This is the one place you can. Uh, in terms of what if I die terribly, so shot, hung, stabbed, drowned, all the fire, you know, all the horrible things, your worst case scenario, eaten by lions, all that stuff. Well, again, rarely, rarely happens. Uh, what is what is not perhaps rare, rare, rare is the having been shot or killed in some way. That's not rare. That that can happen. That does come up. I can't say quite a bit. People do die in their sleep because I do take you through your passing, your passing, your life, you passing away. That's is your soul's journey so it's important to go through that but you know the whole the horrible worst case scenarios aren't often there uh, now some very interesting bits have come up about how people have died things that you just wouldn't realize and um, and you know you work through that the probably top question as well is will I feel it will I feel it when it happened the answer is sometimes. Sometimes you will. However, I will say this, please remember, it's not that you'll actually feel the bullet or the, the guillotine, but you may feel the emotion that came with it. I mean, I've seen people wriggle a little bit in trance while they were passing over. Um, you know, the neck kind of goes back a bit. But they, what they recall to me is that, yes, they knew it was coming, the guillotine was coming down and that was it. And they just felt a little, because then they, they, they're gone. They're, they, they died. They passed. So there's no pain. It's huge. Done. Done. If you die the slow death, that has come up before as well. Yes, you'll feel the emotion of, you usually feel the emotion and there may feel be a little bit of discomfort, but it won't be anything near what you actually experienced in that past lifetime. That's the feedback to me from people who have passed in that way. That they have not, they didn't experience it in, in the way in which they would have experienced it when they were there. However, they can experience the emotion of it all. And when they're passing, they're looking back on their lives. So we do go through that part as well. It's a, again, two hour session, a lot is uncovered within that time. And I, and, and I really do mean everyone says, Oh my God, was that two hours? It felt like 10 minutes. Everyone says that. Now, given that, that's typical with hypnotherapy, you know. So, however, with past life regression, it's two hour session. It's a long session. It often comes up. Um, so time distortion is normal with hypnotherapy, but certainly it's amplified with past life regression. Now, the other thing people often ask me is, well, can I just buy a tape and do it myself? Give it a try if you like. Do it. If you want a really good past life regression, it needs to be facilitated. The reason being, Hypnotherapy is the unconscious mind free floating. If you don't have a direction, it will free, free float, especially when you get to the point where you're actually moving beyond that veil into the past life. If you don't have someone guiding you or helping you through, you could wander off anywhere. It's a bit like meditation. Next thing you know, 15 minutes has passed. You fall asleep. You don't know what you don't know what happened. We need 
a direction, intention, and facilitation. So I think the tapes can help. Uh, I think they are really effective if you've done it already. If you've already done a past life regression, then a tape may help. But the session itself is very detailed. And also, you you want to uncover the information, but you also want to integrate. You want to know how this is connected. Uh, I think the other big question is, will it work? What if it doesn't work? Well, again, we try to eliminate as many distractions as possible. So the normal stuff, no phones on, that kind of thing. If you're taping the session, you've got to put your phone on silent. Uh, but again, I, I, sometimes I can't gauge it. They, I believe, my belief is that it's necessary. So if you went through the past life recession, it's going to work. It will work. But what, how open you are to what you experience is a whole different thing. I can't make you see anything. I do remember a session, gosh, years ago, where it was a, the person had a really good session. They were very good. When they looked at all the details, it, for them, it was almost as though, okay, that's interesting. They couldn't connect because it was a past life issue. So, again, this is why it needs to be facilitated. It wasn't until I helped to connect the dots to show them, this is what you said when you came in. Now look at this. And then they were like, oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. So I, it's an interesting thing that happens. And I think finally, one of the, uh, so, oh, just to, <laughs> just to go back to that. Yes, it will work. I believe everything works. I don't believe you're doing it for no reason. It works. You will have gotten something out of it. What was necessary to get out of it, you would have gotten out of it. Uh, and, you know, again, you may, it may be that you're in the category of needing more than one session. And that can happen. Because you now you've had a taste of it. So the next session, you'll be able to fully go in. Um, I don't do past life regression for no reason. I'm a very busy therapist. And I do many other things. And I have a private life. So I haven't got time to just willy-nilly do regression sessions. And so, or any session, really. And so... I believe your session will be successful. If I've taken you on as a client, I believe your session will be successful. And I think the final question is, why does it take two hours? Well, there's a lot that happens again in the session. And it takes a little bit of time for the beginning to, to usher you through. That is key. And if it's missed out or rushed it's unlikely you're going to have a successful session. It also takes a few minutes for us to chat and talk about a few things. We can talk about it over the phone, but on the day of the session, it's totally different. We need to set the intention on the day of the session. Even though we've spoken two weeks before, whatever it may be, the day of the session is hugely important. So, if you don't make any efforts to change, uh, even after all that information's come through, then it's quite likely that on, in an unconscious way, you're choosing to remain the same or to keep the behavior, whatever it is. So because we're talking about past life regression, and if you have any questions, please let me know. You can DM me, you can send me a tweet on Twitter, uh, you can leave a message here, whatever you want to do. I'm happy to help and engage. But because we've talked about past life, I'm just going to say a couple of quick things about present life regression. So present life regression works in a very similar way as past life regression. The same basics apply, but the difference being the obvious one in that we access your unconscious mind or the subconscious same thing for this life's memory bank what happened to you in this life. And sometimes memories can be regressed. So there have been times when during a regression session, regular regression, this life regression, someone's gone back to a past life. And in this instance, we would move through the life and right back to where we need to be. 
So I won't bring you out of the state. I will just move through the life with you so that we can focus on this life. I believe it's a distraction. When that happens, it's distracting you from getting to the nitty gritty. So I'll state that this is indeed um, rare. I, I, I was debating that. So this is rare. This is a rarity as we always make clear our intention before the actual regression. Same as past life. We would do that with present day regression. And in addition to this, when this has happened, the past life has always been quite significant to our current situation of seeking information from this life. Present day regression can be helpful for many things. Sometimes you may not remember certain elements that happened in childhood or even in adulthood if it was traumatic and those memories can help you to heal. But it just depends. Uh, but yes, present day regression, for example, would be something happened in childhood you can't remember or you can't remember anything before the age of three or the age of 10. If it's some, Sometimes it's the age of 12, 13. If you can't remember anything in early adolescence, there's, a, there's an issue there. And so present life regression can help. So moving on to future lives, uh, since we're talking about all of our lives, future lives. So we can progress forward as well, similar to what happens during timeline therapy and other therapies that project forward. So this can be helpful in seeing where perhaps the collective unconscious has already uh, had a plan for you. Keeping in mind that we have all been given free will. This is a glimpse into the future. So free will is very important. It's just a glimpse into the future. It can be extremely insightful. And we have evidence that in some cases, all of what has been seen does occur. So I'm making that statement because I have evidence and I know other therapists have as well, because my clients have reported back to me saying, during that future life progression, this has happened eight months down the line, uh, because we always agree that they will let me know. And it doesn't matter where, I mean, I was once approached in Sainsbury's, by a client saying, oh, I've been, I haven't seen you in a year, but I really wanted to let you know what happened. I'm happy to discuss. Uh, I'm happy to hear. So please never be, never hesitate. Let me know. Email or if you see me out in Selfridges, that happened as well. Just let me know and I'm happy to. I, I love feedback. Uh, so a session of past life regression lasts two hours and the process takes much more time than other sessions because of the recall of information. And I would say this is the same for future lives. The process of moving forward. The process of projecting forward into your future. Uh, but, you know, oftentimes my experience has been it's usually 90 minutes. So it's usually an hour and a half for future lives. And, you know, I don't know if there's a rhyme or reason to that. I, I believe, this is just my belief system based on experience of these sessions, I believe it's because you're not going through the soul's journey backwards. Something happens when you go back for centuries that slows the process a bit. Uh, some regression sessions are just 60 minutes. I can recall several future life uh, sessions that were <laughs> explosive and they were just an hour long. So it just depends. I, For future life, I always map out two hours just in case. And there's a lot that can be done as well. So this depends on previous sessions. If you've done hypnotherapy before, again, the same but if you're project, projecting into the future, so you may want to know what's coming up for you, how you'll respond, how it will affect your life. So the biggest question here is, is this a psychic reading kind of thing? No, it isn't. A, you're the one progressing into the future. So I, as a therapist, I'm not telling you, I'm not your psychic, I'm not your medium, I am t in that session. I'm not. I am. T I am just helping you. I'm not telling you what's going on. You're the one telling me what's happening in your future. 
you can see your future. You can see. Now, this happened with weight loss once with a client. I can say because they don't they don't mind where they projected into the future, and they were so disappointed at what they saw. And they did approach me、uh, weeks. It was weeks later, actually. It, it was already happening, and so in a way, this was really good because they could see that they had to put things in place for it not to progress to the state that they didn't want it. So that was really helpful for them. In the end, you're the one who knows what's going to happen. I believe at a soul, deep soul level, you know. So future life regression can be helpful in that sense. I will say that yes, I use hypnotherapy for all of those sessions. Anything to do with time distortion, where you're you're moving through a timeline, you're moving through time. Hypnotherapy will be used. So many people think that they're in a trance state when they're in a therapeutic session, a regular counseling session. They're not. They're in the here and now. Sometimes they will regress in memory and in time, yes, but that's very different from an actual future, past, or present life、uh, regression or progression, shall we say? Because future life is really future progression;、uh, it's not、um, regression. It's just progression. You're progressing into the future. Now, for present life. Uh, also, I would say、um, it's not a quick fix. None of these are a quick fix, and to affect real change, you do need to dedicate time and effort. You need to, as I said before, take it on board as a mission—a mission to change. So we all have incentives in life, and so if somebody said to you,、uh, "I will, if you do this, if you change that one behavior." I will give you one hundred billion pounds. Now, if money is important to you, it's quite likely you'll be able to change that behavior. If money is no and not important to you at all, then you have no incentive to change. None. If your partner is threatening to leave you, that's an ultimatum. So it may not feel like an incentive unless. Well, that's very complicated. But I give the example because it can appear that that can be an incentive, and it may not always be the case. It may actually feel like an ultimatum, which, which depending on the relationship, you could dig your heels in. So everything is not as it seems. In no way do I advocate past life regression or any progression or any type of hypnotherapy. As a quick fix or alternative to helping with a deeply rooted psychological issues or problems, in no way. So behavioral problems like personality disorders, addictions, physical and chemical, and other problems needing long-term psychotherapy need to uncover the roots of the behaviors and support systems. So it may be peer group support. All of those will be helpful. So one session of past life therapy will not usually cure or fix you. It will reveal what's there to be worked with. Sometimes it may affect a quick change. Sometimes, so you know you'll be able to learn some information about your karmic progression and your soul's journey, which can help you in this lifetime. And again, I want to reiterate: this is not a psychic reading. The process of a therapeutic session is exactly that. It's the goal to begin the healing process. So, whilst a session can help to see what may lie underneath a certain problem, it's in no way the answer to all of your problems. If you're truly dedicated to making yourself whole. Then you will be willing to dedicate the time, the effort, and the resources to allow this growth to take place. You will not have developed these problems overnight, and it's unrealistic to expect these problems to be solved overnight. Be kind, patient, 
and gentle with yourself. So this is just one area of my practice, which is past life regression, present life regression, and future life progression. And if you have any questions again, I am happy to help. It's one of the topics I do enjoy talking about because it's slightly different from traditional therapy. Just like breath work or rebirthing. And many people are interested in past lives. But I, as a therapist, try and weed out the novelty factor. This isn't just for show. It's like stage hypnosis. I'm not a stage hypnotist. There is no stage. I took up hypnotherapy as a therapeutic way to help people. It is just one other therapy. I just wanted to talk about the, this topic because there's so much interest. And during the pandemic, there was a lot of interest in many therapies. Uh, there's a lot of spiritual element now being taken on board for your sessions and amalgamating them. You can have counseling, you can have hypnotherapy as well. There's nothing wrong with doing rebirthing too uh, or using hypnotherapy for the birthing process. There's nothing wrong with doing your aromatherapy, your essential oils, as well as your psychotherapy sessions. I think not one thing solves it. My motto is throw everything at it and see what sticks. Look at absolutely everything and see what sticks. And that, hopefully, will bring you a great result. And if it doesn't, keep trying. Be willing to try it all. And I'll see you next time. This has been the Inquisitive Wren Podcast. If you have feedback on today's episode, tweet us at Inquisitive Wren or leave one here on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening. Thanks for listening. See you next time.